Hello, this is Chris with Elevate Net. We're going to go over a few specific information security management models. Uh, we're going to compare the Critical Security Controls, or CSC, with the Federal Information Security Management Act and their risk management framework. So, who, how, and why? The CSC was developed basically in 2008 as a response from the Secretary of Defense asking the NSA for help in prioritizing uh, risks and potentially developing some way to mitigate these risks. The NSA had actually been refining a list of controls that were effective since the early 2000s. CIA's Tom Donahue is known for this quote of fix the known bads. So basically the controls, there's 20 controls here, each specific control was designed to counteract something that was known as an issue. So each particular control is supposed to be, or in order to be a priority, it should actually mitigate a specific risk. The Ra uh, risk management framework, on the other hand, was a little bit earlier on. So in December of 2002, uh, the E-Government Act was passed by Congress and signed into law by the President. This kind of took everybody uh, by a little bit of a surprise. Um, so that was kind of turned around real quick. In January of 2003, this project was established to kind of deal with what was then put down as law and how to establish those requirements. So basically it required each agency to develop, document, and implement a specific information security um, program. This extended to other agencies such as contractors, so on and so forth. Uh, it required executive agencies within the federal government to abide by these set of rules. Um, specifically, it was implemented in multiple different stages. So phase, or, yeah, phase one, in uh, between 2003 and 2012, the standards and guidelines were basically developed. And then phase two, as you can see, overlaps from 2007 to 2012 was the actual implementation and the assessment uh, put into place. Now, in this secondary phase, the NIST and its risk management framework was actually established. how they're applied. So the CSC, as we mentioned before, there's the 20 specific controls built to address known issues or the known bads. Uh, within these multiple different controls, there's subcomponents and there's multiple items within these different controls. Uh, those different subcomponents remain flexible and that's kind of the, the glory of this overlying uh, organization is not exactly defined as what you have to do and it evolves as our threats evolve. Um, it gives those who use the published framework um, kind of a layout towards security and how to implement a best known practice. So it's not necessarily an end all be all but it's more so a checklist towards um, a security framework. Uh, the FISMA is kind of a descriptive list. It's not quite as defined as the 20 controls with the known subsets. Uh, it's basically just gives you a list of effective information security programs should include X. So there's multiple different items within that basically just says you're supposed to have X, Y, and Z. It doesn't necessarily define what you need to have like the 20 controls do or it doesn't give really a checklist. So it's kind of a loose guidance. Uh, there's also multiple different companies that are available to help with that certification. Um, you could say it's kind of become commercialized but it's also gone a little bit by the wayside as far as its effectiveness. So the metrics. 
Now within the CSC, obviously, again, we have these 20 top controls, each with their own subsets, and this checklist approach. Um, by using this checklist approach, we are able to have kind of a guarantee baseline. So it's like going into, you could say, or some have said, going into a surgery situation. You have a set list of checklists of what you have to accomplish and how you do so. So kind of the accepted route to accomplish what you need to do. There's always going to be the variables, but there's at least the checklist as far as the guarantee. So at bare minimum, everybody does these 20 controls and the subsets. Now, s different types of situations or different types of programs or companies might implement the checklist a little bit differently. It's just kind of this uh, general guidance to really give you an idea of how to secure yourself. Within the FISMA gives you this framework. Um, you give the, or it gives the available generalities. It doesn't really define the checklist, which is what I like about the CSC. It kind of just gives the generalities of what it should have. Um, it, it basically requires specific planning uh, for the security. It ensures appropriate officials are assigned security responsibilities. Um, and it requires periodically uh, reviewing of the security controls in the information systems program. And also there's the authorized system processing prior to operations and periodically thereafter. So it's basically put this plan into place, ensure someone's responsible for it, continuously review, and um, authorize each specific control. Now who's using this or what impact has it had? So at the CSC, um, it's basically used by a lot of our government uh, agencies. So within the DOD, within the CIA, within the NSA, as well as the private entities and subcontractors therein who are somewhat involved with these different programs. So you might be looking at like an information company that would be deployed within the DOD. Um, they're required to deal with these 20 aspects. <clears throat> now, the CSC was released to the public to help ensure that private entities and utility systems could benefit from the work that was put into this system. Um, also, a kind of a interesting aspect was during the evolution of these 20 controls, this information was released to a number of different private agencies or entities that were not necessarily governmental run just for the sake of getting at that secondary look or tertiary look towards what they put together, um, get kind of the heads up and heads down and potential suggestions. So it was, a, it was a really interesting work between both public as well as private security entities to ensure that we get the best possible outcome. Um, the FISMA the phase two as we mentioned earlier was kind of the core of the NIST and the um, management framework that's kind of the, the the big outcome you could say of the FS, FISMA um, it required the different governmental agencies at that point to abide by this guideline to receive grants or different governmental uh, monetary support one thing that I found interesting was that Ford specifically when this was implemented kinda got caught off guard and scrambled a bit as far as really understanding what they needed to do, how they needed to implement this new guideline or these generalities. Uh, and it has been said that walking around the company, asking a lot of leadership within the company what this even wa was, a lot of people didn't even know it existed. Um, Alan Paller with the SANA, which was actually the entity that was part of development of the CSC, has indicated that it was basically a well-intended program in response to the law that was put in place, but fatally flawed tool. So my choice between the two is obviously the CSC, if you can't tell from the demeanor of the overall conversation here. So what I like about it was the effort amongst both the private 
as well as public entities. Um, there was the Secretary of Defense, the NSA, the DOD, the CIA, multiple different private agencies. Uh, they were able to give their feedback as far as their response on things that could be tweaked or what could help to make it better overall for everyone. Um, it's been widely accepted now. It's been evaluated, like I said, by the private sector. Um, there's the multiple different subsets that continuously evolve and help to really just make this overall checklist that much better. Obviously, as we saw before with the, when it was actually put into law versus implemented in the phases, uh, this whole program is a lot newer and again with these subsets a lot more flexible. And with going back to the original quote, um, it's purpose driven. So it's entire, all the checklist points or these 20 controls are there to fix the known bads. So they're not just a generality put out there saying you should have X. We're looking at, for example, perimeter defense. We know that there's attacks from the outside. We need to have a perimeter defense. And then the subsets of what it takes to really do that. So that's pretty much everything we have here. And I'll back up. <clears throat> Again, this was a comparison of the information security and management models, comparing the critical security controls, or the CSC, with the Federal Information Security Management Act and their um, risk management framework. Thank you, and uh, I look forward to your comments.